Hi everyone, welcome to episode two of my GoPro and Paralens journey. I've got my rig kind of set up now and I just want to kick off by showing you video sequences that I've taken with this setup underwater recently. I hope you enjoyed those. So let's have a look at what I what I did. You can remember in the first episode I said I wanted to mount two um, GoPros side by side, which I have. Here I've got my Hero 8 with my close-up lens and the flip filter system. So this means I can get wide angle or I can get closer up. It's a times five um, lens. I think I mentioned before they call it a macro, it's actually a close-up. And on this side, I've set it up for macro um, with the uh, Macromate from Backscatter times 15 lens. And I'm generally just using this setup for, for macro, although, although I can still use it. But you see, I've taken the filter off. And if I do open this side, sometimes the filter catch comes down and stops that locking properly but I can do the other day I jumped in the water I left the Wi-Fi connection on so the Hero 8 had drained its battery so I was on Snoopy Deep Reef so I had to actually open this one keep it open with my finger and I got some wide angle um, overall I'm quite pleased it wouldn't fit straight on the tray I had to make this plate and mount the two so I so I could get so I could grip but it's it's looking good I'm happy with it it's very negative in the water I do have to correct that I do have some flotation arms coming on the way um, I did this set this up originally with the two fusion lights with two arms and I took it on a dive first dive on the Zainab wreck and by golly was it horrible it was pulling me forward it was too heavy in fact, it was so bad, uh, after 30 minutes, I gave up. It was some of the best fish for ages we'd had on, on the Zainab. I went back up to the boat. Um, my buddy Steve um, came up, up later because he was diving with the other Steve. And he said, where did you go? I said, I just got fed up with this. It was too heavy. You know, it was dragging me down. I had a scooter in tow as well. So I said, right. And then I got back to the dock and I measured and the buoyancy and that's in the clip coming up now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to calculate how much water this total setup uh, displaces. I can then work out the buoyant force so how much buoyancy would need to counteract it and make it easier to use underwater. So it's really simple. This is the container I made for my disinfection um, video. There's a link below so you can see how this is done. I filled it just to the bottom of this tap, and this tap is now open. So any water, any displaced water will go into the measuring cylinder. So all I've got to do is that. Just let it pull the water out until it becomes to the bottom of the tap again. You look there, 740 millilitres of water, seawater displaced. So now we'll calculate um, how much buoyancy needs to be added to that total setup for us to achieve neutral buoyancy, in theory. As you can see, this is negatively buoyant with, with two fusions on. So what I did, I put, just put the one fusion on, left my two sub tigs on, 
and this has worked quite well. It's still heavy. If you look at the crab video I, I published earlier this week where I, I filmed 27 crabs in just under an hour, towards the end of the dive this was getting quite heavy. You know, some, I had to go up in different upside down, I had to, I had to um, negotiate sea urchins, we had a current running and I tell you by the end of the dive I was happy to be out of the water because it did become quite heavy and I decided that I'd, I'd also check this and see how negatively buoyant it is and that's coming up in the clip now. Okay so I've now set the camera up like this until I get some flotation arms. I've tried it a couple of times it seems okay it is still a bit heavy so I'm going to find out how much water it displaces. Uh, the problem I've got with setting the lights up like this is because we have a lot of particulate in the water here I am getting bounce back but once I've got um, some decent arms on there and I can focus the lights further away um, maybe with a lot of the shots I don't get the particulate but as you know as you know I'm learning I'm looking online um, so we'll see how that works so what we're going to do now is just like I did before we're going to find out how much water this displaces so then we can work out how negatively buoyant it is so it's going back into my tub then I've got the measuring cylinder here so we'll open the tap get that positioned right so we'll let that go and we'll see how much water is displaced then using the density of the seawater we can calculate the displacement and how much points is required to make it neutrally buoyant plus or minus which will then fine-tune but you know it is displacing quite a bit of water which means it is quite negatively buoyant so we can see there we have displaced 650 milliliters of water so now I've got to figure out how I can comp compensate for that and to bring the um, my, my GoPro rig to neutral buoyancy um, when I do fit the other camera onto the frame I will have to do this again but this gives me a good start to start thinking about how I'm going to balance and get the, the system neutrally buoyant as I've mentioned before I do have some buoyancy arms on the way which will help but I'll see if there's anything I can do I'm not sure that I can just to balance it before I, I receive the buoyancy arms so I've got my work cut out and my work to do so overall I've been pleased with this I, did, I am getting to like the fusion um, it does work for me in this this array I can move it between both cameras I use these um, subtigs just as a bit of supplementary lighting but they do work well for example if I've got to do a macro on a, on a nudie brank or something, I can just turn that down and get enough light. You know, there's, here's, here's an image of an nudie brank done like that. So yeah, what next? Well, the next big thing is um, to check out some more lights, um, to really look at these and see the, how these lenses perform. As I said, I'm quite happy to date, but I want to, on, on future episodes, I'll do one just on the Macromate, um, one just on the Polar Pro. Um, I've also managed to find a times 30 macro lens which I've just ordered for $30, $30-$40 on AliExpress. So that's on the way. I'm looking forward to that. So next thing is to get this balanced and neutrally buoyant underwater. And then we need to really look at, at the lighting. Ah, one point I didn't mention. If you look on the mountings here, this one the seven, I can actually release. Whoops! I can actually release that one underwater, and I'll show you what I do with the other fusion. And as you'll see in the clip in a minute, the torch lying down. But I can actually, especially with crabs or critters, I can use the torch, and I can then position this and get some nice, nice shots. I also have um, made a little weight up that this clips into. You'll see that in the picture just now. So that's that's quite a neat little trick. So and then I can just clip that back on underwater. Before I did that, I'd also set up this little baby. So I have another Hero 8, um, 
which unfortunately has gone back now to be changed because within a couple of weeks the front screen has started to bleed. Um, I contacted GoPro customer service, they were fantastic um, and agreed to exchange the camera. They sent me the courier um, labels, everything through, so it didn't cost me a penny to send to them um, and I'm just waiting for that to come back. I'm also um, got a similar setup um, which I'm going to do with an old GoPro 6 that I've got, so in case I lose a camera. Now what have I been doing with this? This I can actually put down and start and go away and start filming. It is a bit forward heavy. This tripod is not the best tripod. I did buy this tripod. It's a, it's a Jobo magnetic tripod and I mistakenly, foolishly thought I could stick it to a wreck. But you know, a wreck's full of coral and stuff that's grown on it and it doesn't work. But what I, what I do do, I do leave it down like that, put that over and then go away and leave it. You'll see some footage just now where I left this for about eight minutes and I got some great um, um, shrimp and goby footage. Yeah. So I'm going to be experimenting with that. I also um, used it to get some jawfish footage recently um, which I'll be uploading in another video but we managed to get the jawfish to pop out of its hole and swim, catch something. I couldn't because it was static and I wasn't there we actually saw the jawfish come out, get something, go back in the hole. So that's where we are so far. Um, quite happy with the, with the tray. Um, one thing I don't like about it is these handles are starting to move. Um, they're getting loose, so I'll probably just take them off. I wear gloves, so I, I don't think, think they're necessary. Next week I'll be um, reporting, doing a review on the Fusion lights. As I say, I'm quite, quite happy with them, but I've got some underwater footage, you'll see how I use them, you'll see some of the images taken with it and then I'll give you my full and honest opinion and then you can make your own decision. Thanks for watching episode 2, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, from this episode going forward I hope it gets a bit more dynamic with reviews and more footage in the videos but thanks for watching. Hopefully my Hero 8 will be back soon as well.